My name is Kate Sample. I am with PESI Publishing and a clinician as well. And I'm super excited because we have yet another wonderful resource with our wonderful author here, Dr. Seth Gillihan. Welcome, Seth. Thanks, Kate. Thanks for yeah. having me. I'm excited too. You know, I, I saw uh, the flip chart for the first time just a couple of days ago when we got our, our author copies and, and uh, it's always nice to see the final thing. Yes. Absolutely. So if you don't know about Seth and his work, you should, because he is fantastic, a, a very talented CBT clinician um, who has written a lot of different resources for us. Um, and we're focusing on the kids ones today. So I just want to point out he's got the CBT deck for kids and teens. And this one has been so helpful for so many clinicians across the globe that we thought, hey, let's move on and do something new with Seth, which is how we got to the flip chart for kids. So um, Seth, do you wanna kind of walk us through the chart, how it, how it works, the features, why you wrote it and and all the good stuff so people can know what it's all about and how it will help. Yeah, great. Great, so this is actually the second uh, flip chart that we've made. The first one was just the CBT flip chart. It was intended for adults, uh, maybe uh, adolescents and older teens. Um, and I think some people, actually, I know some people were using it with their younger clients mm -hmm. with kids because uh, it is just, you know, it's a very kind of uh, clean, straightforward presentation of the material. But, um, but you know, kids and, and adults are, uh, well, kids aren't little, aren't just little adults. So we wanted something that was, that was more tailored for them and, and also really tailored for the, the issues that therapists are running into, you know, in, in working with clients and working with their youngest clients. I mean, just on a personal note, as I've, you know, I've been a therapist uh, for, gosh, over 20 years. And, um, and it really wasn't until the second half of my, of, of those years that I realized just how, how challenging the kind of day in day out work of therapy mm -hmm. was for us as therapists. So yeah. I mean, the, the work is incredibly meaningful and, uh, but also equally probably challenging. And um, there's so much demand now. And uh, so, so anyway, all that to say, I've been extra kind of invested in creating resources for therapists that, that hopefully can make their work easier and, and uh, more effective. So, so there's this, and um, as you can see at the bottom here, it's written by me with my daughter, Faye Gillahan. Yes. So uh, she's eight and um, she's, she actually loved the, the CBT deck for kids. She would, she would pull out cards and uh, like put them at, at our places at the table and say, you know, here's a card yeah. for, you know, for mom, for dad, for, for everyone to, to use. And so um, it, seemed, it seemed like a fun thing and, and also helpful to, to work with Faye, you know, to make sure that the language felt like it was really hitting it and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, wasn't what I imagined, you know, a child would say, uh, but to be like, oh, that's not really something, you know, kids say in 2023. So, uh, so she was, she was an extremely helpful collaborator with, you know, coming up with ideas and you know, mm -hmm. thinking about how to make it uh, more interesting, um, clarifying some things that, uh, that might've seemed clear, but to her, she's like, well, I think it might work better if you know, such and such. And, and writing is one of her, her very favorite things to do. So, so it was also a great collaboration. So, I love that. so with that, I mean, it's, it's, it is a flip chart. So it sits, it's got this stand built in. So it opens up and it, it sits flat. And then there are uh, glossy pages that face the, the client, that face the child. And then uh, there's their matte pages, black and white, that are on the reverse. So they are copies of the front image, almost. They're they're different though, in that they add extra information. So you've got you know, very basic ideas on the front to introduce concepts, and then you know, the therapist can look at the backside and and you know elaborate on things. So uh, so getting into you know the part on research, take a closer look at it. Is the thought definitely true? And on the back, they can see it says, you know, write down what you were thinking. What is the evidence for and against it? Mm -hmm. So that's just, that's the setup throughout. So, so that's a, a general 
introduction. Uh, one more thing I'll say is the the first part of it introduces the general concepts, like uh, you know how to how to work with thoughts, uh, you know the more of the cognitive techniques. Then we get into more of the uh, behavioral approaches. So like this is exposure therapy, facing your fears. In this case, a tiger, probably not an actual tiger in real life, because we don't want to face things that are actually dangerous. Right. And then and a section on the, the basics of mindful presence. And then the second half is clinical applications. So you know, finding it hard to focus, um, struggling to get homework done. So I, I as I as I thought about you know what to work on, you know, one option would have been OCD, depression, anxiety. But I, I wanted this to really feel like it was geared to, to kids who were looking at it. And so I, I thought instead of, you know, what, what are common problems that, that kids and clinicians are dealing with? So, you know, getting, okay. getting homework done, feeling anxious around other people, you know, instead of social anxiety. Um, yes. You're worrying about getting sick. It's a common concern and obviously a relevant one, especially after this, uh, all, the, all the illness these past few years. Feeling unhappy about doing chores or a pain point for kids and parents. So, yeah. so that's, that's the basics and, uh, there's more to say, but, but, uh, turn yeah. it over to you. Yeah, no, I think that's great. It was a great walkthrough of how it works and what you can do with it. Um, the, what's kind of neat about it is that the glossy pages are actually dry erase surface. So you can, you know, use them over and over with clients, but to your point about pointing out problems. That's one of the things I loved about this when we were conceptualizing it is that you didn't want to take the clinical route. You didn't want to say social anxiety disorder, OCD, panic disorder. You wanted to say perfectionism, boredom, chores, you know, the things that kids are actually facing and actually do have to overcome, you know, using CBT strategies. Um, so I just think it makes it that much more accessible. Um, in general, whenever I think about these flip charts, so when I was practicing, I used a lot of CBT with kids because it works quite well. Um, and I had a whiteboard in my office or I was carrying a clipboard around or whatever it may be. And, you know, thoughts, feelings, behavior, triangle, right? right? And so you write it again and you apply it to your client and then you talk about it and you go back. Um, and so what's nice about having the flip chart is that you can use the same resources over and over again, because a lot of therapy is doing the same thing eight times a day, you know, depending <laughs> on, you know, who you're, who you're seeing. Um, but in CBT in general, what, what do you find is the most helpful for kids when using CBT? So the topic of this talk is kind of like the challenges of it. Um, and what do you think is most helpful about CBT for kids? Mm. Well, I think a lot of it is, you know, what's, what's most helpful for adults, which is, you know, taking a mm -hmm. big, what can feel like a big confusing mess of an experience, you know, when I'm, I'm all bound up emotionally and, you know, my, my mind doesn't seem to be uh, working with me and I'm you know, struggling to meet my goals or I'm held back from doing certain things by anxiety and fear. And so just taking that, that kind of jumble of things and breaking it down into components that alone I find can be really helpful in just starting to, all right. I mean, it's a core tenet of, of CBT, break things down and then they're more manageable. Something that's, that's, that feels like it's too much is usually just too big. And so we can break it into smaller parts. So that's, you know, exactly what we try to do with, with what you were describing that, you know, the CBT triangle, that's, that is really, you know, the kind of foundation for so much of this. Yeah. So we've got, you know, this one of the one of the very first pages is thoughts, feelings, actions. So understanding those those three parts, how they how they relate to each other. I agree. I mean, I think whiteboards are fairly standard issue for a lot of CBT therapists. And you do find yourself writing, you know, your sixth CBT triangle of the day. So so yeah, it's already, it's created here. You know, there are, there are images that can you know, make it more engaging for kids. Uh, the, you know, being able to write things in can be helpful. You can write in here, you know, what's the, what's the situation. So what happened? Um, I, actually, I can show you my, uh, this is, this was sitting out on, on uh, a table in our house and uh, some young people apparently vandalized it. 
Oh, look at that. They got right in there. We wrote, it, wrote <laughs> it all in. So this is being present during activities. And they, there are different ways to do that. See, hear, feel, taste, smell. So engaging with senses, for example. Mm -hmm. We wrote in the names of various characters from uh, shows they've watched or games they played. Apparently, this is Doug, Raya, Raya, Alex, and Ben. I recognize some of them from the descendants and then activities uh, what's that the descendants yes yeah. and then activities to practice uh, so you could write in anything here they've written in different activities for different members of the family so apparently Faye's going to play a game Ada's going to learn French and dad's going to eat a meal that's all right it worked oh, out for me yeah that did work out for you and then I won't mess up there their work but um but then yeah, you can write you know you can, can circle things kids can write in their answers to really you know make it more interactive for them so they participate and then erase as cleanly so you can do it again with uh with your next session i love that anytime i think you can make something concrete for kids based on obviously their brain development and developmental level um it just brings that message home even more and the interactive piece of that and, and the work you do in general, I think just just speaks volumes and, and emphasizes, you know, what kids can learn from cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. Um, and I think anytime we can make it visual, make it interactive, it's that much more helpful for kids because you're right. It's not usually you said it's not usually too big. No, it's not too not too much. It's just too big, too much. Not too much. It's just too big. And yeah. CBT helps break that down. I love that. I'm gonna have to write that down. And Use it with my daughter too, yeah so. yeah i think i've also yeah. said it it's not too hard it's it, when something feels too hard it's usually too big like a, you know, a task. yeah i really like that yeah, um, yeah. I, I wanted one, one more thing i want to say kate about your, your question okay. about what's most helpful is that it, it's hard to know what's going to be most helpful for any one person and and it's often not what we think it was or, or think it's going to be i remember in, yeah. in working with adults and asking them at the end of of their their treatment course you know what was most helpful to you and you know, if it was anxiety treatment, you know, maybe imagining it was going to be the exposure we did or working through some of their their fearful mm -hmm. thoughts. But sometimes people would say like, well, I think it was those breathing exercises we did in the beginning. And you know, the, the way we were presenting the therapy is more like, you know, here's some breathing you can do that might be, you know, kind of like a helpful side thing. But the real treatment is this other stuff. And and mm -hmm. and you don't know, you know, so for some young people, they're they're going to find that like, just learning that the breath is always their friend they can come back to is kind of a stable place. Mm -hmm. Some kids are really going to resonate with that. Uh, for other kids, it's realizing like, oh, my mind plays these tricks sometimes. And it tells me yes. that that I can, you know, look into a crystal ball and see the future, but I can't actually, you know, tell these fortunes. Mm -hmm. Or for others, it's going to be like, you know, I was afraid of that thing, but I didn't think it was, I knew it probably wasn't really dangerous. And then I did it and then I did it some more and now I'm not really afraid of it. And that's like, I mean, obviously a lesson, lesson for life. You know, we can all continue to, to use that kind of thing. So, so it'll, it'll vary, but, um, but, but we'll break it down and find out what works for each person. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I just think, you know, CBT is, is just one of those ways that helps break that down in really concrete ways and, yeah. and kids can make, you know, better assessment of what's going on and, um, hopefully make better choices for themselves. But then also, like you said, I mean, these are lifelong skills. You know, these aren't just getting over a hump of one thing. I mean, learning how to tame your thoughts and think about your thoughts is a skill in and of itself. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Just recognizing like, oh, my mind is telling me these stories. That is, mm -hmm. whether you're a kid or you're an adult, just yes. sort of seeing seeing through that there's real freedom in recognizing that your mind is making stuff up and it might be true and it might not be true. So I don't have to just take mm -hmm. it as, you know, take it at face value all the time. Yeah. Yeah. My brother says to me, you know, if you, if I'm having a bad day or he is, he'll say, it's just one of those days where you just, you shouldn't believe your thoughts, just get through the day, right. you know, and just, you know, whatever it may be that's going on, just don't believe your thoughts, start again tomorrow, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And it's so it's very powerful it is yeah yeah that's nice mm -hmm. too yeah to just sort of set that set that as a like like almost like a guardrail for the day like i'm not gonna yes. i'm not gonna veer out of my lane today because i know that there's that there's that bumper there saying like nope nope that's 
that's not that that's a false lead you don't have to believe yeah. that I, i've done similar things with you know knowing that i'm that i'm tired or that i'm yeah my stress mm -hmm. level and realizing like the things i'm going to think i need to say to my kids today for example are probably not going to be helpful so i can you know sort of temper some of those automatic impulses yeah yeah and just kind of a not not today maybe tomorrow right. yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. maybe maybe another time yeah we'll come back to that um yeah yeah well thank you so much for being here seth we obviously love working with you we love the products that you create with us we know it's helping so many people clinicians and kids alike and families uh feel better you know and that's that's the crux of what we do and, and it, it's important work so um if you're interested in um, Seth's chart with us or any of his other products with us for CBT, there's a QR code there and then also a link at the bottom here um, that you can find it at pesty.com. But thank you, Seth. I'm sure we'll be doing this again soon as we do have a workbook coming out soon. Well, next year sometime. And I'm sure we'll be doing this again. So yes. thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. I, I love working with Pessy. I, I love our collaborations. And I think that all that you do uh, you and your team do on the back end really i think you are the you're the usually unsung heroes of of all this work so so thank you for all your efforts oh well, thank you i appreciate that yes all right everyone have a great day and uh we'll see you next time thanks everyone thanks.